here we go. So if you are ready to rock and roll, here are some links. There are two links here. They're both bit.ly's. They, um, there are some uppercase letters, so you need to be aware of that. All right, so here we go. We're on the sheets. We're on the sheets tips. We're gonna bend the data. What is sheets? Sheets is a spreadsheet. Okay, so those of you that work with Microsoft, you're familiar with Excel. Same thing. Exactly almost to the, the minuscule little data points. Same thing. Yes, whatever you can do in Excel, you can do in Sheets. Can you do it the same way? Heck no. They're different. <laughs> okay, they are different. Uh, Google Sheets is also an app that you can install on any tablet. Uh, or any phone, I don't recommend you do that because it is really, really small. You can do all kinds of things with sheets. And for those of you that aren't familiar with forms, everyone look up here or look at me. Forms is the sidekick to sheets. Everyone thinks sheets is this, or uh, forms is this great big monster and it's, it's the big brother of sheets and it's actually not. Sheets is the big brother to forms. So when you create a form, their responses are going into the form, but all of their answers can also be put into a sheet. So everything, every quiz that you create, every data set that you have that you're collecting from people, I don't care if it's a poll or it could be, what do you bring into the potluck in, in six months? Um, what are you doing for this? What are you doing for that? Uh, how do you, what are your opinions on this, that, or the other thing? Upload your files, do all of this stuff. That's forms, but it all goes into a sheet. So all of the information from your form goes into a sheet. You have to know how to work with the sheet so that you can manipulate the data that you're collecting. Don't just look at the form for the data. You're going to get so much more functionality out of the sheet when you collect the data in the form. So just remember that sheets is the big brother. Forms is the little brother. Okay. It's the sidekick. So some terms to know. You have to know these terms. Some of the, for those of you that work with sheets or you work with Excel, you already know these. Bear with me. We got to get everybody up to speed. You have to know what a cell is. You have to know the cell range, what a cell range is. You kind of have to know what a chart is <laughs> if you're going to be working with charts, okay? All sheets, and I'm going to open up a new sheet before I get to the sheet tips. All sheets have cells. So when you click in a sheet, click this little square thing that I, when I click, it becomes a little square. This is a cell, and it's in line with a, a letter, which is a column, and a row. So this cell right here is at B3. You have to understand that so that you understand the formulas that you're gonna be creating. So this right here, this is B3. And I'm gonna shade that so you see it a little better, okay? This would be C3 right next to it, D3 right next to that, okay? In the top uppermost corner, we've got A1. So it's really simple, but you need to understand that. Okay, so we've got cells, this is a cell, B, B3 is a cell. The entire row would be the row three. The entire column would be column B. So we've got cells, rows, and columns, okay? What else do you need to understand? You need to understand that everything that is put into a sheet is data. Everything that is in a sheet is data, okay? So even this one little cell right here that has B3 on it, that is data. I don't know what it means, but it's data. Uh, sort. That's just, it's, it's, you can go from A to B or A to Z, I'm sorry, A to Z or Z to A. So sorting is something you need to understand as well. Format. We all understand format. Even spreadsheets have a format function. So I can take this cell right here and I can make it bold. Okay, you can't really see it all that much, but I can make it bigger. Okay, so that's part of the formatting. There's a lot more you can do on a sheet with format. We're going to cover this in a little bit. 
By using the format menu, you can do all kinds of things to this sheet that you can't do in a Word doc, that you can't do on a slides. So there's lots of functionality here with format. So just, just some words that you need to understand, read over those, get them in your head, because I'm going to be saying them. So if you're not quite sure what I just said, what does she mean by format? Well, just click on slide four and look at that uh, definition. So here we go. We're going to have some fun now. Woohoo! We're going to open a new sheet. Don't do it yet. <laughs> there's two ways to do it. Actually, there's more than two ways. There's many ways. There's two methods, I should say. There's a conventional method and unique methods with an S. Okay, the conventional method most of us know. Um, and if you're new to Drive, you might not know this, and that's okay. We're going to, I'm going to show you this if you want to follow along, feel free. From the Google window, I know I'm signed in because I see my little avatar right here. It's a little tiny person right here. I see myself. You might just see a letter. And if you just see a letter, that's okay. As long as it's your letter. If your name's Jean, it should be a J. If your name's Anthony, it should be an A. Okay? So just make sure it's you. And then right next door is a waffle. Next to, in the waffle, you're going to see drive. All right, so that's one way to get to drive, by using the waffle. It'll be with you on any Google tool. You click on the waffle and you can go to drive. Or, I don't know, I kind of like typing, so I just type drive.google.com and enter. So go to drive if you've never opened a new sheet before. Um, we're going to click on the new button. This is the conventional way to open a sheet. I'm going to click on new and you can see because Google Sheets is one of the top three uh, apps, you can see Google Sheets right here. Now there's a couple things you can do and you might want to look over if you, oh, I already know how to do this. So um, next to Google Sheets, you're going to see a little arrow. If you click on the word Google Sheets, it's the same as clicking on blank spreadsheet. Same, same. But from here, you also get the option from a template. Just wanted to let you know that. I'm not going to do that. You can do it if you wish, but then you're on your own. <laughs> Don't ask me any questions, okay? I'm just going to click on Google Sheets. And bada bing, bada boom, wait for the magic. The first thing you should do when you open up any new file on Google is to title it. So where it says untitled spreadsheet, just type something in there to let you know what it is, okay? Because Google doesn't care what you name this. You could leave it untitled spreadsheet. You could end up with 30 untitled spreadsheets, which when you go and look for that spreadsheet that had all of the, um, all of the quizzes in it, um, you're gonna have a play a hard time finding it. This up here in the Omnibar, that is actually the name of the file. That's Google names the file as soon as you hit new spreadsheet. Okay, so you need to make sure that you title it something that you're going to remember because I can guarantee you, you are never going to remember this big long URL that's up here in the address bar. All right, and even if you're on Safari or Explorer or Firefox, any of the other browsers, that big long link up in the address bar, that is actually the name of your file. Okay, so title it something you're going to remember. All right, so this is one way, the conventional way to create a sheet. There are a bunch of other unique ways. So I'm going to go back to the slides deck, get the next slide. And this only works if you're using Chrome. If you're going to use Safari, Firefox, or Explorer, you have to either use the waffle. Okay, so you're going to select the waffle and find, select that sheet icon, or you're going to go to Drive, hit the new button, go to Google Sheets. Okay, if you're using Chrome, you could, on a new tab, type sheets.new or type sheets.google.com. Either way you do it, you're going to be creating a new sheet. Um, Sheets.new is one click. So I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to type sheets.new, sheets with an S, dot new. 
hit my enter key and there we go. I've already been signed into Google. Maybe I've seen something really cool that I want to copy or I want, I want, oh, oh this is a great idea for data. Boom. I go sheets.new and I've created a new sheet just like that because I are, I know I'm signed into Google. I'm always signed into Google. So I, I just go sheets set new. Boom. Done. Okay. Now, because I'm not going to use this, I'm going to type delete here. So I remind myself to delete it <laughs> because the other way to open a new form is to click open the new tab, right? And then actually type sheets.google.com. Well, why would I want to type all of that? Because you're going to see up at the top of the page, your template gallery. If you don't see template gallery up at the top of your screen, you probably see something that looks like your district name, which means you're using your club, which is fine. So you just click on that and up towards the top of your screen, you're going to have tabs that I don't see because I'm on the pub. I'm on a public Google. Okay, but you'll probably have tabs up here. One will have your district name and then the other one will say general templates or something to that effect. Okay, so template gallery. Look at all of these templates I could use. And as soon as you click one, it's yours. So don't click. Don't click because it will be yours. Okay, and you're gonna, you're gonna, oh, what's this look like? Click, oh, what's that look like? Click, what's this look like? Click, and you're gonna have all of these different spreadsheets in your drive. And, you know, two weeks from now, you're gonna go, what the heck was I thinking? So um, there's a lot of good sheets here. Uh, and after you click in it and it is yours, go ahead and click one if you want to. Um, you're going to be able to uh, change it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this one down at the bottom. Mine says grade book. I'm going to click on a grade book. As soon as I click it, I have to wait for the magic. Okay, and somebody has created this template because they think it's a big, beautiful thing. And if you look at it, this template, if you followed along with me and you've got the grade book template, um, you would go look at the bottom and you see different tabs. So here I have grades. Uh, I've got student want to one and two, and they've already put in some data for me. So I, I can follow along. I can put my teacher name in. So you, you can make it anything you want. This is your yours to do what you want with. Okay. Um, you can also change the color. You don't like the color blue that's been selected. You can make it red. The template gallery. Let me go back over that. I opened up a new tab. I went to sheets.google.com sheets with an s dot google dot com okay and up at the top of the screen you should see the plus sign with a blank and then on the the top right hand corner you're going to see something that says template gallery if you don't see that you might see your district name so you click on your district name and then you'll see two options you'll see two at tabs one will be your district which has no templates or maybe just one, I don't know. Um, and then the other tab will say general tab or general templates or something to that effect. By the way, while you're here, uh, maybe you don't ever want to use templates, fine. Click on the skinny snowman and hide your templates. Don't do that unless you never want to see templates again, okay? Yes, you can get them back, but it's kind of hard to do. <laughs> I found that out. <clears throat> so. Learn from experience. Um, so this is the templates gallery. So, and that's, and if, if you scroll down, when you go to sheets.google.com, this, these are all of your sheets as you scroll down. Now I'm looking at every one of the sheets that I've ever had, that I've ever touched or that's ever been shared with me. Okay. Um, I'm going to look for just owned by me. Here we go. These are all of my sheets. All of the ones that I've created. Why is this so, so what? Why can't, I could just go to my drive and get these. Yeah, you can go to your drive and then you'd have to do a search to find all of your sheets to put them in a list like this. Google's already done this. This is exactly what you see when you have the app installed 
on your tablet, on your phone. You're actually going to the app site, okay? So instead of install, you don't have to install anything because you're on a desktop, right? So you open it up in a browser, sheets.google.com. That is the app site. So this is actually what the apps see, okay? In line with each one of these uh, sheets that I've created, there's a skinny snowman way over to the right, and when I click on it, I can remove it, okay? Or I can rename it, or I can open it up in a new tab, or whoo -hoo, I can make it available offline. This is not in the sheet tips, so you better pay attention, <laughs> okay? So how did I get here? How do I make it offline? Cancel. Um, you go to sheets.google.com. You find the sheet. Don't make them all off available offline. That takes up a lot of space when you are working on a tablet or a Chromebook, okay, or your phone. So when you make it offline, what it's going to do the next time you open it is it's going to download it onto your device so that you're able to make changes on it, whether you're near a Starbucks or not, okay? So don't make them all offline. Just the ones that you're going to have to, that you want to manipulate offline. Um, this goes the same with slides and docs. You can do it the same way. You click on the skinny snowman. You click on available offline. Wait for the magic. And then we see this little check mark next to the name. And that's telling me, okay, this one I can work offline if I want to. Okay. Also in line with the skinny no snowman is the remove. So I'm going to turn off available offline and now I'm going to remove it, which basically just moves it to trash. Uh, all your files are saved to trash for I think it's six months now and then they will be deleted. They will be deleted in date order. Okay, so we've opened up new sheets in a couple of different ways. Uh, we've done it the conventional way through Drive. We've done uh, through the waffle. You can go to the waffle if you're signed into Google. Yeah, Linda, you're going to have to use Chrome. <laughs> so, so one of the you have yeah you have to use Chrome in order to make your 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 stuff offline. Sorry, I forgot that one little part. Um, we've also done Sheets.new, and you've gone to Sheets.google.com so that you can see the templates. Okay, I have a sheet that's ex shared with me that has an extension XLS or uh, how do you convert it? Okay. If you want to convert, yes, you can, you can manipulate sheets um, if they are an Excel spreadsheet. You can keep them an Excel spreadsheet. What you do is you go to Drive. Okay. So I'm going to Drive. And you would find the spreadsheet. Or first, let's, let's go over uploading. So you would find the spreadsheet and you would upload it. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to do it the way that I can show you right now. You go to new and then file upload. All right. So you, you upload that Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Before you do that though, you want to go to the gear. So you're going to click on the gear. You're going to go to settings and then you're converting uploaded files to Google Docs editor format. This includes docs, sheets, slides. So everything that you convert, if you, go, if you have a Word file and you upload it, it will convert to docs. If you had a, a PPT, it will convert to slides. If you have an XLS, it will convert to sheets. So you have to go to drive. You have to go to drive.google.com. You select the gear up at the top of the page on the right. You go to settings and then convert uploaded files to docs, okay? All right, so that's how you convert it. If you've already uploaded it and it's already converted, go ahead and uh, click it open. And then up at the top of your screen, you're gonna see open with. This is on docs, sheets, and slides. It works the same way across the board. So you open that PowerPoint or you open that, spread, that spreadsheet or you open up the, uh, the doc. And up at the top of the screen, you'll see open with. And it will give you the option to, whatever it will convert to, it'll give you the option to open it up in a spreadsheet, um, a PowerPoint, uh, slides, or a doc. 
and then you choose the appropriate format, boom, it's converted. So you have to do one or two more steps that way, but that's how you convert. Okay, let's move on. We want to get to do some, some, some stuff, some stuff. It does throw off the formatting, but you know what? It's the price you pay for being free. Grin, smile, laugh through it, okay? <laughs> Change your formatting. All right, I'm going to go to the sheet tips um, worksheet in just a minute. Before I do that, I want you to see what we're going to be doing first. So we're going to select an empty cell, and then we're going to type in a function, and then we're going to have a formula. Okay, so we're going to actually format or formulize a, um, a, a sheet here. So this is mine. And here's the address. Just And there's 41 of you here already. That's cool. So now you're not going to be able to write on this. You're not going to be able to write on mine. What you're going to have to do is go to File, uh, make a copy. Okay, and you're not given any options, so you just make a copy. Rename it if you want to. That's fine. Uh, it'll come up as copy of, right? So you can rename it here if you want. And then you can um, type it on it. Type it on it yourself. All right, down at the bottom of this worksheet tips is a simple sum tab way down at the bottom. And I'm not quite sure it's showing up on you guys' screen. I know this is really small. I apologize, but uh, I can't make it any bigger. All right, so simple sum. I'm going to go to that tab. Now, here, before, we, before we do any summing, all right, formatting is kind of important. Uh, when you're putting in numbers, sometimes for no rhyme or reason, Google will left align, right align, or even uh, center align for no apparent reason at all. So let's line up our numbers. Okay, so I'm going to choose A2. That's the cell. And I'm going to hold down my shift key to A7. And you can see I've selected a range of cells. I'm starting to use those words. Ooh. So I've got a range of cells here. Okay. I want to center align all of them. So I'm going to look at my toolbar. And right next door to the uh, merge cells button, there's a horizontal align tab. So there's a little arrow next to it. Okay. Then all those little lines right there. I'm going to click on the arrow and then I have three options here. I'm going to center align the one in the middle and look at that. All my numbers are centered aligned. Okay. That makes it a little easier to view. I might have even included the header if I wanted so that they're all center aligned together. There we go. All right. Now, Next step, we're going to add all of these numbers right now, or select A8. So it's the number after the number 87, or the cell after number 87. It's also yellowed out a little bit. Okay, so we, we've selected that cell. All right, now Google knows things, and sometimes it reads our minds. Okay, so with this cell selected, um, I am going to I'm just going to start typing, okay? And all formulas must start with equals, must. So we're going to add all of these cells right here. We're going to add all of the cells. And the formula or the function for that is called sum. Now, I just know that because I've been doing this a long time. If you want to do something else, different, you don't want to do a sum, or you want to know where that sum is at, there, right here, this uh, little, I don't know what that icon is called. Uh, I used to. It's the functions icon right now, but it, that, that backwards looking E or the weird looking E is a Greek letter for something. Anyways, so functions. There's an uh, arrow next to it, and here are all the functions that I could add to the cell that I have selected. And here's sum. Okay, so I can hit that sum, and then, oh, look, the cursor starts blinking exactly where it should, and it has already put in equals sum for me. Now, what I have to do is I have to figure out which cells I want to sum. Summation, yes. Okay, so I could do A, 
one and then plus a two and then i could do plus a three and for you old school folks you're going oh my god what is she doing um oh by the way i don't want to do a one because that's the header right that doesn't have a number in it so a two plus a three plus a four that's a lot of typing okay you can do it that way you could do equal sum a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 you can do it that way if you want there's a much easier way when you're doing a range of cells you want to remember the colon okay so i'm let me see if i can zoom in here i can't because it's there we go so right here i've got equals sum and i could have typed that i didn't have to use the function uh, bar there menu so i've got a2 colon a7 then i'm going to hit my tab boom and this range of cells equals 284 if you double click in the cell that you just put the formula in you will see that the range has been highlighted for you so if any of those numbers are missing expression thank you gene <laughs> okay if any of the numbers are missing then you know uh oh i got to add something so let's let me show you that a whoops a5 okay so i see here that i've got these cells are selected they're highlighted but i'm missing a6 and a7 so i need to go back to my formula right and go right back here and then i can change the numbers as i need to it's a very simple function the sum okay so if you're following along i want you to do average now okay so right now it equals sum leave that there in the cell below it a9 i want you to do your own average i want you to average a2 through a7 if you want to look to follow along you may i'm actually going to type it you have to have the the cell ranges within parentheses <gasps> what happened? Name. Oh, that's not an. Oh, they changed the function name on me. Oh my God. I haven't used average in a long time. This happens all the time. Oh my God. You have to actually type it out now. All right. So I just learned something. It, the, uh, the function for average used to be AVG, but now they make you type it out. And there we go. There's the average. Uh, this is a really long number. We're going to learn about formatting here in just a sec. I'm going to scroll over a little bit so I can look at the time or duration. You might not have to do that, but I also wanted you to see that you can also, and this is really important, especially on a form. If you ask uh, students, how long did it take you to read this? How long did it take you to read that? How long did it take you to do this or that? And they put in the times. They put they 30 minutes took me 15 minutes uh, it took me an hour and 15 minutes so they put in the time that it took them to do something we need to make sure that Google understands that this is not a time but a duration okay so right here this 1 colon 15 colon 00, zero that could be misunderstood to be 1 15 a.m okay uh 45 uh, this must be a duration okay it decided that as i was putting in these numbers as the form was putting in these numbers okay but you can see this one it says 1 30 30 a.m so it's understanding that as a time instead of a duration so i need to make sure all of these are duration so i have to format them so i'm going to select the cell range i'm going to select what is this um Get out of there. There we go. This is C, the C column. Okay, so I've got C2. I'm holding down my shift key through C7. Okay, so you're going to go to format. 
and down to number. And now down in that list, you're going to see something that says duration. So click that. Now Google knows all of these are duration. And now you notice that the 115 that was 115 AM is now 115.00.000. Okay. I want to make all of these uh, right aligned. I'm going to select the cell range again. And I'm going to, because I've made my screen bigger, I've, I've got to look for the alignment, the horizontal alignment, and I'm going to make them all right aligned. There we go. Now they're all lined up. So, okay, I'm going, I wanted to show you that you could sum a duration, right? So we've got, we, Google knows that this is a time, a duration. So I'm, I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did over in the, uh, the A column. I'm going to just sum. I'm going to go equals, oops, equals, sum, C2, colon, C7, in parentheses, and there we go. Four hours, 35 minutes, 30 seconds. So you can add up time that your students have spent on something. You can add up scores that your students have spent on something. You can get the average time, the average score. You can do all kinds of stuff, okay? How did I make it duration? So I put, let's just say the form fed the sheet a bunch of times that the students all put in, how much time they put in. When it's coming into the sheet, the sheet doesn't really know, is this a time or a date? So you select the cell range. By the way, I know everybody has duration, so <laughs> all right, that's been pushed out long, long ago. So I selected my entire cell range. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the, uh, the equation as well. Okay, so I selected that. I'm going to go up to format. Remember, we're making it look like something. It's a format. I'm going to go to number. That's what throws people off usually. They're looking for the duration or the time right there but you need to go to format, number, and then duration. Should be right in, in line underneath date and time. Okay, all righty. So simple sums, very cool. You can do all kinds, of, there are lots of complicated sums. And I'm sure there's some of you out there who's gonna come on, let's get to the complicated stuff. No, nah, not gonna do it, all right? The, we, we've got some stuff coming up that's gonna be more complicated, so I, I've got you covered. but. Simple sum. Start simply, learn it, live it, use it, and then go, okay, now I want to learn how to go to your expressions. I want to learn how to count, or I, don't, I want to learn what a minimum means, okay? If you want to learn what a function means, when you go to the, thank you, Jane, expressions tool, scroll all the way down and click on learn more. This is not in the tips slides you need to remember this you're going to go to expressions learn more another website basically is going to open up for you and here is the entire function list some of these you're going to go oh my god but <laughs> some of them are really simple all right you can also narrow these down by uh let's say you want to do something to text or you want to do something mathematical uh you want to filter you can actually choose any one of these and all of those text functions will come up for you. If you wanna type in keyword, you could type in a keyword. It didn't find some, you're kidding me. That's a mathematical function. Huh. Learn something new every day. There we go. So I had too many filters here, so I just, leave it as narrow by, then I typed in sum, and here we go, it's down here somewhere. Boom, okay? So, there, <laughs> and, and thank you again. Uh, all right, so here I'm gonna go ahead and close that sheet, um, and then I'm gonna go back to the slides. You can stay on the sheet if you want, okay? And I've got to make this smaller, I can't see. All right, now, next one. We're gonna split data. So how many times have you had students maybe on a form and they're selecting or they're, they're just typing in their full name? 
and, and that's probably easiest for your students, okay? Or you have them type in two things in a cell and you really need them to be in two different cells when it comes to the sheet. The name is a good example or a name is a good example. So I'm going back to the sheet and I'm clicking on the split tab, okay? Now here are a bunch of names, okay? There's also uh, some date and time. So let's do the names first, okay? Here's the thing, when you do a split, you must, 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 must make sure that the column next door has nothing in it because when you do a split, everything that is coming into this column the next column it, it all goes to the right to the right to the right it's splitting to the right okay if there's anything in that column it gets overwritten so make sure you have a blank column before you split let's say that there was something in this column and i don't want to get rid of that data okay what i would do is click right click on the column right click on the column and then i just add one to the left boom i didn't screw up my data i didn't get anything i didn't mess up anything but now i have a blank column to the right of the text that i'm going to separate why do you want to separate first and last names i'm so glad you asked that question how the heck are we going to sort by last name do you have the answer? There is no answer because you can't, <laughs> okay? I can't sort by last name if they're all in the same cell, right? So I need to split that up. I need the last names to go into their own cell because right now, if I did a sort, it would alphabetize or in, in order or reverse order, doesn't matter, but it would be by the first name. So here we go. We're going to select our cells. So I'm selecting A2. I'm scrolling down to A21. I don't have to do them all. I could just do a couple of them. All right, but I'm going to do the whole set here. So I've got my cell range selected. I'm going to go, now we're doing something to the data. We're not formatting it. We're not making it look different. We're actually doing something to the data. So if you can remember that, you will remember where split is. So click on data, and on here you're going to see split text to columns, okay? I'm gonna click that. Now it's gonna give me the option, there's a little tiny box, I don't know if you can see it on yours or on mine, it says detect automatically. Google will detect commas, semicolons, periods, and spaces automatically, and it will split on those. Now let's say maybe for whatever reason I want to split some text that has a uh, hor uh, um, uh, what is that called? The, the slash. The right slash. Okay? Or maybe it has, uh, maybe I want to split it based on the parentheses. Okay? So I can customize, I can select what I want this text to be split on. You'll, you'll know when it happens. All right. Right now, though, the, the common thing between all of these names is a space, right? So I'm just going to select space. Boom. Now, Trish, when I go up to my column, my B column, and I click the arrow on it, and I sort my sheet A to Z, bada bing, bada boom, we have our last names alphabetized. So you might want to do that. You might want to do that. Um, I could also put them together. That's a whole nother function. It's called concatenate. We're not going to cover that. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Go to the, uh, the, the functions list here, and you might even see it here. No, we don't see it here. So learn more. Learn more by concatenation. All right, now I'm going to scroll down on this split tab. And uh, on A22, I see there are some dates and times. Now, maybe I want the times to be in their own, um, own column. Did the first name stay with the last name when we sorted? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Let me, let me show you something else. Now, oh, it might not have. 
oops, you know what I forgot to show you? The freeze, okay? I did forget to show you that. All right, so everybody look back over here because this is kind of, uh, you gotta, it's visualizing. Um, when I hover my uh, cursor right above the number one, it's an arrow until it turns into a hand, right about there, okay? When it's a hand, I can grab it and pull it down, okay? What that does is that freezes this column right here. I just made it blue so it stands out a little bit. So this is frozen, okay? Now I could freeze, I could go uh, even further, down to number two, down to number three, whatever. Um, but I want it to stay at number one because that's my header row. That's very important. So when you're sorting, you have to freeze the row above what you're going to sort. Okay, so let's just write the word last. All righty. Now, now when you sort, the first names will stay with the last names. Let's sort by first name first. Okay, I'm going to go to the A column. I'm hitting the arrow next to, it's in line with the A. And then I'm going to sort sheet A to Z. Boom. And all the numbers came up first. Very cool. All right. And now I'm going to go to the B column. And I'm going to sort sheet A to Z. Last name. They all stay with their uh, respective cousins uh, next door. Okay. So yes, when you sort, as long as you have that header row frozen, you're okay. All right. Now, let's move down because, again, we're, we're splitting. Okay. I'm going to select the range that has dates. Okay. I am going to go to the data. I will repeat the freeze in just a sec. I'm going to go to data. And then I'm going to split text to column. And it does it automatically. I didn't go, I didn't select the separator, all right? I let it do it, okay? So I wanted to show you that. Now we have the dates and the times in two separate columns, okay? You don't have to go in and select space or comma or, or whatever. You can do it as you wish. Now I'm going to select the four o'clock p.m. There's, a, there's an eight o'clock in here as well. And I'm going to separate, again, data, split text to columns and I wanted to show you custom. So the custom separator now is going to be, oh, it already did it. The son of a gun. <laughs> they did it already. I wanted to show you this, um, the AM PM, it already split it. So Google's so smart, it just went boom. What happens if the name is first, middle, and last? Hang on a sec. We're going to repeat freeze, Audrey. I'll, I'll, that's very important because we have a SME who has, um, and I'm going to I'm going to kick him to the curb. Ryan, if you're here, I love you dearly. Ryan De La Vega. He has four, no three. De La Vega is three names in his last name. So I'm going to show you what happens when I have to do Ryan. All right. I'm going to get rid of this stuff here so I can show you Ryan De La Vega. And I'm also going to get rid of my dates because I don't need those. All right. So let's say we have Ryan De La Vega. Okay. So I want to split this. Yeah. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to split text to columns and then I'm going to go, oh, no, I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to do that yet because I need to make sure that there are one two, three, four spaces, four columns, just for safety's sake, next to his name. Because if there's anything right here, watch what happens when I split Ryan's name. I'm going to go to data, split text to columns. I'm going to tell it the space and whatever I typed right here is gone. But it did split his name up, right? And now, because it split his name up, <laughs> I have to put his name back together. So what I usually do with someone like this, I'm going to undo what I just did. 
what I usually do is I look through the names really quick and I go, okay, I've got somebody with a, with a, um, with a space or more than one space between their names. And I'll do something like this where I take out the spaces between uh, De La Vega, okay? And then I'll split. Get rid of that. And then I'll put his spaces back in. So that's what you need to be aware of. If it's first, middle, and last, then you're taking up three columns. Just make sure that that third column doesn't have any data in it that you don't want erased. Okay? All right. I think I'm coming back to the sheets. Uh, we've just split the data. So that's, again, all of this is on the handout, all right, or on the, the, the slide stack. So you'll be able to see it. Uh, if you want a worksheet, then you would make a copy of it and you can go ahead and, and do it to it. So here's where we selected the range, um, the different, you can customize. How do you get rid of the extra space? Hmm, if it's at the end, there's a trim white space on the data. So go to your data tool and you could trim white space. If there is an extra space in a name, you might have to actually go in and do it. You might have to look at it and go, oh, there's an extra space here. I have to delete that. So every once in a while, you know, Google's good. So is Excel, but it can't do everything. Sometimes we got to do it ourselves. Okay. Oh, shortcuts. These are really cool. I'm going to go back to the sheets. I'm going to go to the format and quick keys tab. Okay. Uh, and Control semicolon, control shift semicolon, and control shift alt semicolon. Sometimes you want to put the date in. You don't have to want to type or you don't want to type the darn thing in, right? So there are some quick keys here. Um, they're in the blue, the light blue. All right. I already did this yesterday. Okay. In the yellow area, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hold down my control key and hit the semicolon. Oh, look at that. Isn't that so cool? And then I'm going to go control shift semicolon. Oh my God, it's 10 o'clock already. Darn. Okay. <laughs> and then control shift alt semicolon. By the way, the word control is command on a Mac. Okay. So there we go. Easy way to put in the date. Control shift or control semicolon. I don't know that you'd ever want to put in um, the exact time like this, but again, you if you want the time to be a different format, you would select the cell, go to format, go to number, and then you can have more time formats. You don't have to have it down to the last second. So we go to more formats. <laughs> more date and time format, same as you go down, down, down. So I went to format. I went to number. I went to more formats and then more date and time formats. And when you select that, you get this really long list of different time formats. So here's the one that I would want just the, the minute or the hour in the minute. Okay. And then I apply, boom, there it's done. It's also a 24 hour time, so I'd have to go back and change it if I wanted to. Google is used throughout the land, okay? And most of the land uses military time. We call it military time. They call it European time. Um, you know, share the love, okay? <laughs> All right. January, February, March. Now, the next three or four um, cells. Do I have to type? April, May, June, July, no. I'm selecting January. I'm holding down the shift key. I'm going to select February. And you'll notice they're all being selected. The cell range is being selected, okay? So I've got January, February, March selected by holding down the shift key. I'm taking my hand off the shift key. I'm gonna take my cursor over to the square at the bottom right-hand corner of where March is at. I'm going up, oh, there it is. There's the crosshair. It turns into like a little, a big plus sign. It's a crosshair. I click on that square and drag it down and the months fill in. Okay. Now do the same thing for two, four, six. I'm going to select two, then four, then six. Do you notice a pattern? Two, four, six. You can do it with two, Ada. Yes. 
Um, I just put in three because it's, it's a safety for me. So I've got two, four, six. What would the next number be? 12? No. Google knows though. Watch. There it is. If you have um, any kind of a pattern set up, you can select that pattern. Okay. So if you've got a pattern of four things set up, select the pattern of four and then drag it down and it should maintain that pattern for you. We're going to rotate the text now. Most people don't know about this. It adds a little space to your column, but it's really kind of cool. So I'm going to select January through July because I had those dates. If you only have January through May, that's fine. Just select your, your months, okay? Up next to the link tool, to the right of the link tool, you're going to see an A that looks like it's out of whack. It's text rotation. If you click on the arrow next to it, look at all of these different options you have. So you can make your text go in any direction you want. I'm going to select this one, the one that's kind of a tilt up. Boom. Now I can readjust my column. It can get a little bit smaller maybe. Yeah. And it looks a little more uh, like I know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Like, wow, how did you do that? Uh, but it's just the text rotation. There's lots of different rotations that you can try, including the up, down, the vertical, rotate up, rotate down. And you can also add, a, if you want your own degree of um, rotation, you can also select that. So that's pretty cool. If you have a long paragraph, if your students have um, on their form, they wrote this really long paragraph. And when they do that, all of the text goes into one cell. This cell right here, lorem ipsum dolor, that's one cell. It's not going across the page. Well, it is going across the page because I'm allowing it to. Uh, right now, go up to the top of your menu. You're going to see text wrapping. It's next to that A tool that we just discovered. Okay, the text wrap. There's an arrow next to the text wrap. Okay, and then um, there are some options here, one of which is clip. So that will stick everything in its cell without allowing it to wrap or extend past. If you want it to wrap and it is a long paragraph, you can do that, but you notice it becomes a really long cell with its own little scroll bar. Okay, so you might want to clip it, you might want to wrap it, I don't know, it's up to you. But that's how you can make a cell all of the data stay within a cell and still be able to read it is by letting it wrap instead of extending past. Um, if you have something in this cell, I'll just type something really quick, and we allowed it to extend, it won't because there's something there. It will only extend if the cell next to it is blank. Okay, so we've learned, oh, it's, and we've already gone over alignment. Right, you also have vertical alignment. So you can um, select that arrow and maybe put it in the middle. Um, sometimes you want things to line up differently because one cell's bigger than the other. So there's horizontal alignment and there's vertical alignment along with the text wrap, okay? Can you, enter, can you put in a, a picture? Sure. So you go to insert, you go to image, and you can put image in the cell or image over cell. So that means you can move it around, okay? Uh, they want you to upload or give it by, um, you know, a Google image search or you maybe you have an image on your drive. So you decide where the image is and then yes, you can go to the insert menu to insert. Um, so we've done the insert already. Um, the the cell contains web entries is there a way to shorten the url if the cell contains website entries is there a way to shorten the url no bruno there's not uh you have to allow it to stay uh when you have a website listed in a cell it actually is a formula and that's why it's so long and it looks really weird uh but you have to leave it that way okay Alrighty. I think I'm going to come back to the sheet. Okay, so we've done all of these. 
uh, or these right here. You've also got some different quick keys. Use them on your own. So it's quickly to format as a decimal. Quickly to format as time is Control Shift Two. Control Shift Three is the date, currency, percentage, and exponent. So all of those are quick keys that you can use. You don't have to go to format and then find how to do blah blah blah. Can you do mathematical operations in Excel as to present a math lesson? Well, that would be Excel, but I'm sure you can do it in Sheets. Yes, Maria. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, you can. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be asking one of our SMEs um, to do a little more in-depth on math. Uh, that would be Barry Bakeen, because he's done a workshop like this before, only he's done it face-to-face. -face. So we'll see if we can get him in to do something like that for you. Okay, conditional formatting. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna go back to the sheet. Okay, I'm gonna go to, oh, we should do charts first. Yeah, we're gonna go to conditional formatting. So skip the charts uh, um, tab and I'm gonna go to conditional format. Okay, these cells up at the top um, through B6 have already been formatted. Okay, they've already been for conditionally formatted. All right. Now, what we're going to do is first I'm going to show you how to put conditional formatting on a cell. All right. And then we're going to I'm going to show you how to extend it to a, a range. So we're going to add formatting or we're going to do conditional formatting to these this cell, everything that's dated February. Okay, everything that's dated February. So I'm I'm selecting A7 through B. 11, A7 through B11. So select those cells. Now we're going to go to conditional formatting is in format. So I'm going to click on format. And then down towards the bottom, I'm going to click on conditional formatting. To my left, a little window is going to open up and Google, Google thinks it knows what I want. So it puts its own little conditional formatting in there for me. Okay, off to the left, I see that it, it has decided that uh, since I selected the range A7 through B11, which I can change at any time if I want, they've decided that if the cell is not empty, then it's going to turn green. If the cell is not empty, then it's going to turn green. This is an if then. Okay, so you need to remember that. You're applying to these cells. If this is true, then this happens. I don't want this. I want something different. I want to follow the instructions here. Add formatting to these cells to color all cells red that are blank. Okay, here we go. So it's the if part. Is not empty right now is selected, but if I select the arrow next to is not empty, I can select is empty. And then I can change the color to instead of being green, it could be red. Okay? And there we go. We've just formatted conditional format. So when I go to February 20 or February 2nd and I add a number, what do you think is going to happen? <gasps> Look at that. So it's just the blank cells that are reddish in color, okay? Now, here we go. Now what I want you to do is go back up to where you see the orange and the green. Okay, so we've got January through January 5th. I'm just going to click in one of those cells. First, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna click in the cell, the, the top one, the 30, okay? And I'm gonna go to format and I'm gonna go to conditional formatting. Here are the two rules for this formatting. So I'm going to click on the green one. Value is greater than or equal to 50. So if the value is greater than or equal to 50, then it's green, right? If the, um, the other one, let me go back is if it's less than 50, then it's orange. So think of this as, as far as um, maybe scores, okay? You might want the ones that are, 
they're really having problems, the, the scores are low, you might want those to pop out at you, right? So let's, I'm going to customize this a little more and I'm going to make it, so we've got the range B1 to B6, right? Uh, and we want it less than, what do I want? I want all the, the, I want the grades that aren't so good to come out. So my point of no return is, uh, let's say 75. Okay. And I'm going to make it, instead of orange, I'm going to make it red because I really want to pop. And we have a 55 there that's still green. So I got to figure that one out. B1 to B6. Yeah. All right. We're going to say done. And we're going to go to the 55 and figure out what's going on here. Because that, oh, here we go. Because the formula on the green one, it says greater than or equal to. So, ah, this is why I wanted to show you this. So we're layering, we are layering uh, conditional formatting, okay? I want everything that's less than 75 to be red. But the rule that says value is greater than or equal to 50 is first. So this is going to be the overriding rule. So do I have to delete my rules and make new ones? No. All I have to do is drag this rule to first place. And you notice as soon as I did that, the 55 over here turned red. Okay. So again, you got a form, you've got a quiz. You want to be able, I'm a very visual person. So I could look through the numbers or I could arrange them or I could sort them, I guess. But I want to, I want, boom, I want it to pop out at me. Okay. So I do conditional formatting on forms when I have quizzes submitted. That way I can see, I need to talk to, <laughs> I need to talk to Anthony. All right. Because Anthony is, yeah, man, he's just not getting it for some reason. Anthony, I know that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to think of a name. All right. So, um, so we're going to add, here's another cool thing that you can do on a form. So maybe you want to know whether or not you've done something or you want people to, to tell you whether or not you've done something. So I'm going to select, um, I'm going to put a checkbox in here. Most people don't know that there are checkboxes in Google forms. So I selected a cell. I'm going to go to insert. And I'm going to, oh, there it is, checkbox, click, okay. I got a checkbox right here. So I've selected a cell. This cell has the square. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right, here's the square right here. And as I, it, it can, there's a little hand. I don't want the little hand. There's my cursor arrow. No, I don't want that either. I have to find that sweet spot. There it is. You have to find the sweet spot. So as soon as you get right in the middle of that square, it's your cursor should turn into a crosshair. If you're on a tablet, good luck with that. Uh, and I, I'm not joking. Tablets are really hard to manipulate the cursor into the hand of the crosshair. So if you're on a laptop or a, uh, a desktop, you shouldn't have any problems with it, especially if you're using a mouse. Trackpad, man, you know, if you're really good with trackpads, it should be okay. All right, so here's my crosshair right there. I'm going to drag this down. Why am I dragging it down? So I don't have to go insert, 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 <laughs> okay? So I'm just dragging down the checkbox, okay? Now, here's what's really cool. And I think this is on the, sh the, uh, the handout. It's the next slide here. I'm, I've gone back to the handout. Here we go. Yeah. So let me back out so I can see the whole thing. A custom rule that you can add is that if the, if the checkbox is checked, if there's a checkbox that's checked, you have to click in the cell so that there is a square. Click in the cell and then there's a square. Okay. Uh, custom rule. If the column is true, if the, the checkbox is true, right? Then the entire row becomes a color. We have actually done this on a, a, a worksheet that I have uh, put together for all of these webinars. 
um, our staff secretary is going in and she's marking attendance. There's a checkbox for that. Then she marks that the certificates were sent. There's a, there's a checkbox for that. And then she sends the evaluations to the presenters. There's a checkbox for that. So every time she hits a checkbox, there's a new color introduced into the sheet. Okay, now yours might not get this complicated, and I don't recommend you get this complicated. <laughs> Just try it out for one or two, right? Start simple. So let's, I'm gonna go back to the sheet tips. Here are my check boxes, okay? I'm gonna select a couple of them. So as we're creating this, you get the idea of how it actually works. Now, I'm gonna select my range. Um, I selected a couple of check boxes. I've selected the range. We've got March through June. I'm gonna go to format conditional formatting. This is where you, and again, Google thinks it knows what I want, and it doesn't. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna click on where it said is empty, and we're gonna go all the way down to custom formula, okay? Now, we've got the, the range selected as A12 through C31. That's what this rule is applying itself to, okay? If, here we go, now, I need to explain something. When you put a, a dollar sign in front of a row or a column, it was, it's gluing itself. So a dollar sign is glue. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign and I'm going to put a C because I want the glue to be stuck on the C column because I want the, the sheet to understand that the C column has the checkbox. This is the if, okay? So if C12 equals true, Is it true or true? Yeah, I had to look at something first. Okay, so if it is true, then it's going to be orange. Now, look what happened. All of the ones that were checked followed the rule. Okay, all of the ones that were checked followed the rule. So it's equals, Dollar sign is the glue because my column C has my check boxes. So dollar sign C12 equals true. And you have to have those equal signs in the, in the exact right position. Equals question or equals dollar sign. I keep wanting to say question mark. Equals dollar sign C12 equals true. Done. By the way, you also have the option uh, to make the, uh, the it bold, okay? Or uh, make the font a different color so it stands out more maybe, or maybe it's grayed out because it's already done, right? Um, to test it, you actually absolutely want to go through and click a couple of those check boxes to make sure they follow the rule that you just set. And again, if you add more than one rule, then just make sure that they are in the right order. Whatever's on the top leads the pack. That's number one, okay? Why C12 in, in particular? Because that's where my first checkbox is, Amy. Um, I, I added a bunch of different tutorials on the same thing, on the same tab, I should say. So C12 is actually where this tutorial uh, uh, as far as conditional formatting on a checkbox started, okay? If I wanted to, I can, well, let's do that. Um, if you followed along, let's double click, or let me start over because I know some of you have clicked off of it. All right, so I'm gonna click in a cell that has the conditional formatting set. Okay, I'm gonna go to format, conditional formatting, right? Here's my rule for A12 through C31, okay? I'm gonna click that open, and then I'm gonna change the range, because maybe you're right. Hey, maybe I didn't want 
12 to be my start. Maybe I wanted 20 to be my start, A20 through C31. So I'm going to do A20 through C31 and say done. And now you see that these that are checked are not part of the range. And remember, I selected the range, right? I selected the range. And then the C12 is the first uh, checkbox in the range that I selected, right? For the first formula. Now, right now, I, C20 is, so I could go here and I could change this C12 to C20. The results will be a little different, yeah? Boom. And as I checked anything within the C20 range, you'll see the conditional formatting change. That probably confused some of you. <laughs> All right. So the formula is just a, it's a custom formula, Maria. So you don't have to stick with is empty, is not empty, text contains, text does not contain. What if you want something that's more of an if? Like if this is checked, then it becomes this. Or if that is this date, it's this. And then I add another rule. If that is that date, then it is this. So just think if then, if then. And if your if thens in your head don't match one of these if in rules that Google has already set for you, then customize it. Create your own if then. Okay? That's why I did that. Let's go back to charts. I'm, going, I'm just going to um, click on the charts tab. I'm not even going to go back to the sheets. I'm going to get rid of this because that was just a test. All right. Now, we had someone ask about math, right? So um, here is just a, a formula, 2x plus 3 equals y. If y equals 6, then here's the answer, right? Now, what if I wanted to chart that out? What if I wanted to graph that out? Wouldn't that be very really cool? You can do that. So I'm going to select the range, which is the Y coordinates along with the X coordinates, right? I'm going to go to insert. And before I hit chart, I need to explain something. Google is looking at your information, your, your range, your cell ranges right now. And it's going, oh, I know what she wants. Boom. Here you go. When Google does that, don't get angry at it if it got the wrong chart for you, okay? You can change the chart. Google's trying to be helpful, all right? And another way it can be helpful after you select your range, I'm not even going to go to insert. I'm going to go way down at the bottom of my screen, and you're going to see some things. One of them, for me, says min equals negative 6. If I click on that, Google is giving me some options for formulas right now. I don't want any of those. It's also giving me an explore option. So this little tool looks like a little plus sign kind of in a comment box. It's giving me some options as far as formulas are concerned. Not charts, but formulas. So that's not... Ooh, and look at this. And then it's because it's looked at the data and it, I gave it a little time. My Wi-Fi is a little slow. Here we go. Look at this. It's giving me some chart information now. It's also plotting points. Isn't this cool? I didn't have to think about anything. Google did all the thinking for me. All right. So it's giving me a bunch of different ideas here that maybe I didn't even think about. If this is the one I want, I click on it. I click on it. I drag it over. And there it is. There's my chart. Once you, if you do that using the Explore tool, you always have the option to change. You always, whether you use the Explore tool or not, as soon as you hit an insert chart and it becomes this or anything, you can double click on the chart and then you have all of the chart options on the right hand side. You can get lost in this. And Miss Trish, I know you're out there, I know you're watching because I helped you do this yesterday, and I bet you spent at least an hour playing with your chart yesterday. <laughs> so um, if you did, chat that in the, in the, in the, uh, the chat. So you've got all kinds of, of really cool things that you can do here. Um, there's, uh, you can 
you can manipulate the series. Um, so right here, if I don't like the color blue, I want it red, I can make it red. Okay. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, you, like I said, you can get lost in here. You can spend days on some of these things, especially if you have something like a, a pie chart. So um, let, let's do that. So I'm just going to add uh, one, three, five, and then a two, four, six. And then I'm going to see if Google sees a pattern because I'm, I'm just playing right now. Let's see what it does. Oh, look at that. It does see a pattern. All right. So I'm going to select these numbers. And if and you, hey, I want to do that. I just typed in 135 and then 246. So 135 and then 246. Can the chart be changed to make X on the horizontal? Absolutely. You have to um, go to the chart. That's what I was showing you that you click, double click on the chart and then you would choose, you would customize it. So we've got chart access or axes, vertical axes, horizontal axes. You control your own chart. Back to this other one. Oh, by the way, the chart, if you don't like it that big, you click on it, grab a handle, make it smaller. Okay, lots of stuff you can do. Back to the numbers, 135, 246. I just selected those and then I dragged it down and it saw a pattern, so it did it for me. All right, I'm gonna select these numbers. I'm going to actually use the insert tool this time instead of explore. I'm gonna go to chart and oh, that's a nice chart, but I don't want that one. I don't want this. I want it something different. Okay, so it's going to keep you, or it should open on the setup tab. If it doesn't, click setup. Go to the arrow tool next door. Right now, it's selected line chart. I don't want a line chart. I don't like the line chart. Okay, fine. We're going to select a pie. Boom, and there we have a pie chart. Woohoo! I'm going to move this down just a little bit so I can work with it. Um, at this point, and look, folks, you, you control this, all right? If the data range that you selected was incorrect, you can change it right now using this, or you can start back from the beginning if you want. Um, but I'm going to go to the customize, and notice my customization options have changed a bit, okay? Here's the chart style. Here's my chart border. If I want to make it different, I can. Um, it's 3D right now. Ooh, I don't have to have it 3D. I can make it flat. Okay. I can, I'm going to click the arrow tool on chart style. I'm going to go to pie chart. Uh, there's a donut hole option. So I'm going to select that. Go to 25. Ooh, look at the middle. Isn't that nice? If I don't like 25%, if that's a little too much for me, I can actually make it 12. Okay. So it's up to you. You control this. You don't have to use these pre-selected um, pre percentages for, that they have decided for you. Uh, slice labels, I could put that in if I wanted. Um, you don't, you know, it's up to you, your chart. Uh, the different pie slices. If right now it's got the, the one is blue. Okay, if I click here, right, I'm clicking on the pie and then the colors are changing. If I don't like this blue, I can change it to anything I want. Um, and I can also make it pop out. Ooh, look at that. So if I'm doing, if I'm doing some data um, and my, my uh, what? My administrator wants to know, okay, how is the GED going? How is the GED testing going? Or how is that testing going? Or their citizenship test, whatever. And you want something to pop out at them, do a pie chart, boom, take that chunk out. Really cool. Um, also on this sheet, because we're running out of time, folks, <clears throat> we have filter and pivot. So I'm going to show you how to do a filter really quick. Um, look up filter on the Google Help. Okay, so let's say we have a bunch of scores. Okay, and I just, I could sort this, and it's already sorted by Andrew, so I've got Andrews, but I want to see what people are doing per test, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to click in the uh, D column. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here to this, what it looks like a little uh, funnel. And it's actually a filter tool. So I'm going to click the arrow next to it, and I'm going to create a new filter. And because I selected the D column that says test title, it's allowing me to filter this column. Right next to test title, I do see that little funnel 
thing again. I'm going to click on it. And I want to know, I'm going to select, uh, deselect all of this because right now it's finding everything within that column, right? And I just want to know how things are going on the language arts. So I select that and I hit OK. And here are the people that took the language arts uh, quiz. Okay? It's a filter. I didn't have to do any sorting. And if I wanted to, I could actually put a total over here um, uh, doing the points, getting an average or some of the points. So let me go over that really quickly again. I'm going to turn this off. I went to any one of these columns you can, you can filter. I click in the column. I go to the filter tool. I create a new filter view. And then right now it's finding everything that's in that column. So everything, language arts, mathematical reasoning, science, social studies, right? If I just wanted to see one or maybe even two, I want to see science and social studies. I'm going to say okay because those two things are selected. And there we have all the science and the social studies. I can sort from here. Oops, no, I can't. What happened? Oh, you made a liar of me. <laughs> so we don't want the blanks. We just want science and social studies. We'll say okay. There we go. It blipped on me. Okay. From here, you can also right now this uh, up above the filter in the black bar. You, yes, you can save. Yes, Jacqueline, that's what I'm covering now. So this is called filter three. So I'm going to call this um, test type filter. Okay. And then that way, because I do, I have several other filters here. Here's filter one. This is on student name. So right now, Howard was, it was the last time I filtered. I can go in and select Andrews uh, and say, okay. So now I just see that test. So if I wanted to name filter one, I, and I should, say by our student filter. Filter, not filler, okay? Uh, there's also a really cool thing that does even more called the pivot. Um, I am not going to show that because we don't have the time. Import range, though, is important. So on the pivot, just look up pivot tables. Those of you that know what they are, you rock. I haven't quite fully grasped it myself, but I know you like, need a lot of data and it does a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. So right here, um, let's say you have a form and you have a live form and data is coming into it daily you can have, you can sort it, but as soon as someone submits something, it blows your sort, right? So what you do is you have the data from the form, or you actually create another sheet. You create another sheet in the worksheet because your form's going into a sheet, right? So let's pretend that, um, where were we at? The, the four, here we go, filter. So I'm going to turn this filter off. Let's pretend that this was a form. All right, all the data is coming in this form. All right, I want to be able to sort this and I want to be able to do other things with it as it's live. I'm not going to touch the form. I'm going to add another sheet, just like that, okay? And then I'm going to figure out, okay, what do you want from this sheet? I want this row of data. I want A2 through A E2. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to know this sheet's name. This sheet's name is called filter slash pivot. All right. Now I'm going to go back to that blank sheet that I just created. All right. I'm going to click in the first cell, A1, and I'm going to type equals. Here we go. This is the magic. Equals filter slash pivot. Oh, I should have capitalized it. Just filter slash pivot. Exclamation point. A2 column or uh, colon. E2, and it doesn't look like it's doing it. Why isn't it doing it? 
Uh, I need to look at my cheat sheet. Hang on. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. Here it is. Equal sheet name. Yeah, so what's going on? I knew I did it right. Oh, it's because of that. Ugh. Okay, so the name. Don't put um, mathematical expressions in your name for your sheet. So I'm going to rename the sheet. I should have known better. So we're just going to call it filter pivot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go back to sheet eight. Sorry about that. Learning moment for all of us. So here we go. Equals filter pivot. Exclamation point. That's very important. The equal sign filter pivot is the name of the sheet. And then the cell range A2 to E2. Okay. I'm going to hit enter. And there we go. Um, and that should only be A2. It shouldn't be a range. There's A2. Now, crosshairs. Dragging it over. Boom. And as I look at the data that's coming in, it's coming in from B2, C2, D2, and E2. I didn't have to type the formula in again. So we've got equals filter pivot. That's the name of the sheet. Exclamation point A2. Right? Now I'm going to drag down from that because I can get B2, C2, 3, 2, boom, 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 way down. I can drag down from the B column. There we go. It's coming in. This will match filter pivot. And if I don't want the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if I don't want the, the uh, class time or class name or whatever, I can take that column out. All I want maybe is the name of the student, the name of the test, and how many points it was. If that's all I want, then I can get rid. That's all I bring in, right? So I can start my uh, sheet with just equals filter pivot C2, D2, and E2. If I want C2, this is really going to blow your mind. Out of sync, right? If I want to start it with D2 and then E2 and C2, you can rearrange this any way you want. You're bringing the data in from another sheet. You're not messing with this sheet. This isn't being changed at all. This sheet, sheet eight right now, is being messed with. Okay, now that might have just gone, poof, blown your heads off the top of your or, um, yeah, blown the top of your heads off. So those of you that are a little more advanced, you're going to understand this, all right? You're going to have to practice, folks. That's what it takes. You need to practice. So just have a sheet with a bunch of junk in it, numbers, letters, number, whatever you want. If you've copied that sheet that I had, I kind of messed it up. So wait a little bit. I'll get it back to where it was when we first started, okay? Um, and then make a copy of it, and then you've got some data there that you can play with. All right, this import range, you can actually bring data in from another, um, another sheet. So what you need to do is have the URL of the sheet. So on this sheet right here, here is the URL. That's the URL of the sheet. Sheets is really cool. Work your sheets.